So what we've been teaching so far, people in Seven Sisters, what we've been teaching so far is the honor that is in marriage. We've been teaching marriage, we've been teaching our people, and we've been teaching the community the honor that is in marriage, okay? Right. So go to Titus, Titus chapter three and verse one. Brother, sisters, it's time, it's high time that we repent. There's a lot of sin. There's a lot of crime that's going on in our community. We are out here to stand up and to be that example to our people, to let our people know also that as we repented, you also can repent, okay? We're gonna read Titus chapter three and verse one. Titus 3 verse 1 Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work So that's what we're out here to do We are here to teach our people to be subject to the higher powers The higher powers go into the laws of the land Because the, the topic on marriage that we've been dealing with the reason when we've been speaking to the different members in the communities the reason as to why we're having issues in terms of marriage is because our people lack taking ownership of responsibility. The responsibility that, that comes with the commitment of marriage, our people do not want to take on that responsibility. So the Bible is teaching us what? Put them in mind to be subject to principality. So the Bible is teaching us to be subject to principality products that comes from people not wanting to get married, our brothers, especially the men in, the, in our communities, in our neighborhood, not wanting to get married, is going against the law of the land, the law of the principalities of the land. Rape is high in our community. Sexual assault is high in the community. Read that verse again. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities. So we have to be subject to principalities as also to be subject to the commandments of the Lord. Read and powers to obey magistrates. And we have to learn to obey the magistrates of the land, we, to be ready to every good work. To every good work. What does it mean when, when the Bible says that we are to be ready to every good work? What is the good work that we are to be ready to according to the Bible? Get me that, Romans 7, 14. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual oh, it's like Romans 7 verse 12 wherefore the law is holy we're reading from the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12 we're learning what does it mean in the book of Titus when it says that we are to be ready to every good work in Romans here it's saying that we know that the law is what wherefore the law is holy when the Bible uses the word law it's referring to the commandments of the Lord it's referring to the Bible it says that wherefore the Bible or the commandments in the Bible is what? It's holy. It is holy, meaning it's pure, it's good for us, read. And the commandment holy. And the commandment of the Lord, they are holy, read. And just. When it says that they are holy and they are just, meaning that there is nothing that's profane in the Bible. Okay? All the things that's written in the Bible is for our good. And I hope that our brothers and our sisters, I hope you're paying attention. We're reading here what the Bible is referring to concerning rape. That is the subject matter that we're dealing with. Because rape is one of breaking of God's commandments. Rape is when we do not keep the law of marriage. When the Bible talks about that we are to not commit adultery, when you rape someone, you are committing adultery and you kill at the same time. And we're going to prove that according to the scriptures. Read that again in uh, Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Titus 3 verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principality. So you hear that our young brothers, especially young brothers here, especially in London, with a lot of knife crimes that's going on, with a lot of sexual assaults that's going on, the Bible is teaching us to be subject unto the higher powers and to who? To, to principalities, to principalities, and powers, and powers, to obey magistrates, to obey magistrates, magistrates go into the governance of the land. We are to be subject and to obey the government of the land. Read, to be ready to every good work, to be ready to every good work. We've already explained what a good work is. 
the good work is the commandment of the law. Right. The Bible in the book of Romans says that wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and the law is what's good for us. We to speak no evil of no man. So we are to speak no evil of no man. So that's what we're out here to teach. We are out here to teach our people concerning the commandments of the Lord. And we've been dealing with the subject matter of rape and we've been dealing with the subject matter of marriage. So go back now. Let's go to read the law when it comes to the law of marriage. Get that in Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. Okay. It's high time for our people to wake up. What we need to realize is that the issues that we have in our community, the solution is in the Holy Bible. Right. We just have to learn and repent. Okay? Read that. Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. The Bible here says that we shall not commit adultery. Adultery is going into breaking the law of marriage. It says that thou shalt not commit adultery. What does it say in the verse above, verse 13? Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. So right before the Bible teaches us not to commit adultery, the first commandment before that, it says that thou shalt not kill. Then in the next verse it says what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Then in the next verse it says that thou shalt not commit adultery. And we're going to show you that when we go outside the law of adultery by raping, that is killing another, pe another person. Okay, that is showing hatred one to another. Get that in Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy chapter 22, we're going to start from verse 25. We're dealing with the subject matter of rape. That's right. The Bible gives us the solutions to the issues that we have in our community. We have a lot of sexual assaults that go on in London. When you read on the reports, you see sexual assaults happening on our London buses. Okay, and it's high time that we wake up and realize that repentance is open for us and we are to come out of that. Get that now. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 25. Deuteronomy 22 verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the... Now, the Bible says here that if a man finds a betrothed damsel. Now, what we need to realize is that the characteristics or the spirit or the action of rape comes from weak men. We're just going to have to say it plain to the people of Seven Sisters. The attributes and the characteristics and the motion of rape comes from weak men. Men who do not understand responsibility, they don't understand commitment, and they do not want to understand what it means to have good communication. They lack communication, okay? So they go for a foul act. They go for an evil act that the Bible condemns. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 25. Come on. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her. Read it, read it again, read it again. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her, and the man forces a, a betrothed damsel. So when, what does it mean when it says that a man forces her? The Bible is revealing rape here. It's showing us that we are not supposed to do this. No sexual assault should be going on in our communities if we learn the commandments of the law. Read that verse again. Verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her, and the man does what? Force her. And the man forces her. If a man finds a betrothed damsel in the field, what does it mean in the field? Is it talking about a cotton field? No. It's talking about out here in the streets. Because when you speak to these men, this is what they refer to the streets as. They call the streets the field. Today we're going out to the field, we're going to fish. And what are they referring to? Women. Okay? That's what the Bible is revealing here. The Bible understands the intent of us, especially our, our men in the communities. Read that again. Uh, but if a man find a big But if a man find a big trust damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So when the man, when the Bible says that, then shall the man only shall die, meaning judgment. That's what it's referring to, judgment. That the Lord is going to bring judgment on such a man who forces himself upon a woman. The Bible is against rape. We're yep. going to say it again. 
The Bible is against rape. Right. And what we find is that these men who act and who put themselves and commit the offense of rape, why is this happening? Because they have not learned the Bible yet. Read, that verse read it again. loud and clear so that the people of Seven Sisters can understand. Read. Deuteronomy 22, 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man forces her, and the reason as to why he forces himself on the woman is because he lacks communication skills. He lacks self-esteem. He does not know how to go and speak to a woman. He lacks those skills. So he has to create inventions, wicked inventions in himself, to force himself upon a woman. Read the verse again. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man forces her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So the Lord is bringing judgment on that man only. Why is the Lord bringing judgment upon this man only? Get me Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 25. Why is the Lord bringing judgment to the committer of the offense? In this case, rape. Why? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 25. Bring it up. Colossians 3 verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. So the Bible here says that for he that doeth wrong shall receive of the wrong that he has done. So the Lord is coming to bring judgment on those who commit wrongdoings. Okay, so if a man was to force himself upon a woman, sexually assault a woman, the Lord is saying that he will bring judgment. Let's, under, let's read that and understand that again. Colossians 3, 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. For he, that man who forces himself upon a woman, who sexually assaults a woman, or verbally assaults a woman, what does the Bible say? He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. So he is going to receive for the wrong that he has done. Okay, because the Lord is a just God. Read that, read on. And there is no respect of persons. And there is what? No respect of persons. That's it. And the Bible says, and there is no respect of persons. There is no respect of persons, meaning the Lord is going to judge the individual for his wrongdoing. So for the man who commits himself in any type of rape, any type of sexual offense, the Lord is going to bring judgment on such an individual. Go back now, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25 again. Deuteronomy 22, verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then that man only that lay with her shall die. Uh -huh. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in it, there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Why? For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter so this matter of rape is the same as when a man rises and kills someone why because you demoralizes the spirit of the woman okay the bible is against any type of sexual assault right we're gonna say that again the bible teaches against any type of sexual assault and it's high time that our people repent it's high time that the community understands this and we come back to the understanding We used to scream oh, black power while Heron was pushed But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain IUIC has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.